Hey Station Nation, it's Ryan. Welcome back to another episode of I Don't Know What's Going On in the Shop Here. We're really going to get on this Kubota. I'm just going to turn the heat down so the um, heater doesn't fire up when I'm talking about this. Okay, so I got some parts in for this uh, 2015. So there's, there's the one that you guys know so far, and then this is the new one. 2015 RTV X1100C. Um, and then I got some parts for it. So I got an engine. This is the D1105 engine. Uh, Kubota has made this since like the 90s or something. This is in all sorts of stuff. Light towers, generators. Um, they make a couple of different versions of this engine. But this is the one that is in uh, the RTV, the 1140, 1100, whatever, whatever. So it's in a lot of these things. And it's in a lot of other stuff. They also make a turbo version of this uh, D1105. So that's the engine. And then the transmission uh, and hydrostatic system. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview of this. Let me run. Engine is a diesel engine, which we all know you got to put diesel in these things, right? Uh, you got the, the oil filter on this side, uh, injection pump over here, so forth and so on. We don't need to get into the engine so much. And then when you get over into the transmission, um, so there's usually uh, an output shaft from the engine that goes in here. So this, um, I guess, this line here would typically have a shaft going through it. Now this one um, is used a bit and the guy needed the transmission parts for his own transmission. So this is kind of what you call a bell housing. Your starter sits here and starts uh, on this ring gear. So if I can wiggle this off without all of it coming off here, there's a couple of alignment pins that are just a second. Uh, of course. Okay, so there's a couple of alignment pins. So this guy, his transmission blew up. You can see a big crack right there. This is his old transmission housing. He sent it with, um, you know, just for whatever. And this would bolt up on here. Um, if this is in your machine, this is what you see. Basically, that goes there. And then it follows over here. Now on this side... Um, there is, well, the, your four-wheel drive gear goes down here, and then your four-wheel drive output shaft is down there. So that would go up to the four-wheel drive unit. And then there's a little shift lever, so when you shift your four-wheel drive, this is going to kick a gear basically into that four-wheel drive mode. So that's that gear setting there. And when you're over here, this is your shifter, bop, bop, bop. And what I noticed with this one, actually, it's very interesting. So let me take this out. Remember your output shaft is going through all the way back to your hydrostat. Let me take this section off, your kind of your gear housing here. And typically there's a bunch of gears in here, right? So they're not here. And this, this shaft is going all the way back to the, to the rear there. Um, and here's your gear selector. And what I noticed actually with this, you know how it's hard to shift these sometimes? This thing is actually hard to shift right here. There's a little um, pin here that pops in and out basically, right there. It's actually kind of hard to shift. So you kind of have to pop it and to get back. But if I just put s just pressure on it, I'm just pushing, like all my weight is on this thing right now and it's not going. All my weight is on that. But if you like kind of come back off of it just a little bit, um, it actually goes in interesting anyway so i'll put shaft from the engine sorry this is kind of long goes through here uh straight through down to your hydrostatic motor and in if you watch that last video with this this is the um uh this is the valve that operates the hydrostatic section and that valve can be found right here so that this valve and we adjusted this line to make sure you're going forward. And if you could pull this back, you'd go backwards. And if you go forward, this is forward like that. So that is right here on this section, right? So what that's doing is, I mean, it's a little bit more complicated than this. This is just the basics. So inside here, there's a little keyway. And this can shift up and down. Well, when that shifts up and down, it moves a plate. behind. So behind this, there's a plate. It's kind of concaved like this. So it's kind of C-shaped in there. So then this can move around. And this is your little pump motor. This is your uh, hydro pump, basically. This is the pump side. So when, when the motor, when you're giving RPMs, when you're 
when you're motoring along, this thing is spinning. So when it's just in neutral, this thing is spinning, right? This is just spinning around at whatever RPM you're going or, or idle or whatever it is. As you go faster, this goes faster, 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 faster. And you can see stuff pumping out right there. That's funny. Um, just water. Is that just water? Totally just water pumping out of there. That sucks. Oh, this is the bad one. This is the unit that came off the machine. So this is spinning around. And that's spinning around in here. And on the back side is that plate that's concave. And when, when this tilts, this will tilt forward or backwards like this. Like that. Um, it puts pressure on these little pistons. We're going to call these pistons, okay? So this piston can go like this. So when this piston is pumping, basically, it's sucking uh, fluid in. It's like this and pushing it out, sucking it in, pushing it out. So if you can imagine this thing is rotating in there super fast, as fast as your RPMs are going. And on the top side, um, it's against this plate. So kind of in a plate at an angle. So on the top side, it's pushing in, let's say, like this. Uh, that would be like this. So the top side is pushing in like this. And then when it gets around, or sorry, the bottom side, it's angled like this. It's pushing in. And when it gets around to the top, they pop back out, basically. So it's just doing that, popping in and out, in and out, in and out, all the way around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them, right? So that's all that's doing. And then that is going to send pressure. So the reason that it can go forward or backwards is if it's on the top, it's sucking in this way and pushing it out that way. But if it goes backwards, it's pushing it, sucking it in this way and pushing it out that way. That goes through this chase into here and then up to the motor, which is exactly the opposite of this. So now this charge pressure from the pump is going through this plate up to the motor and then it's coming in this side or out that side, whatever, it doesn't matter. So then the motor looks the exact same. So this motor is bigger, much bigger than the pump side. So the pump, oh, I lost my little insert pistons. Let's get them in there. These are all just crusty and gross. So there's a little spring in there to keep that, to keep that uh, from put pressurized, right? Oh, that's wrong. Yeah. Anyway, you get that. You get that side. And then this side is the big side. Same thing. And there's a little bearing in here. We can take that bearing out. And then this is that plate. So this plate, see how this is? This is called the swash plate. So it's, it's angled up in there. And that's the same thing down here, just on a smaller scale, right? So up there, this system is self-balancing. So as it gets pressure in here, as you push on the gas or open this valve up, that's going to twist this bottom plate, right? And that's going to start making this pump pump. And that's going to send fluid through this system up to here. And then that's going to that's gonna charge. Instead of pumping down and pushing out, it's going to start filling this up. So it's pushing these out. On this one, it's pushing the fluid through. And the fluid is coming up and pushing these out, basically. So it's pushing, pushing, pushing. That's why this is a little bit larger. So then as this, as this starts getting pressure built on it, this is going to balance out your pressure and move you forward. So in this system on the top, I'm sorry, this is taking so long. Uh, there should be a shaft in here. So there's a shaft that comes here. So if you can see this, this part here, so this one's sending fluid through this system um, up to the motor. The motor is turning this shaft. This shaft up here goes into the engine, and then there's going to be there's a connection sh connecting shaft in there. So it's the output shaft from the hydraulic motor that comes into the gears in here. So then your gears sit here, and then you can shift you can shift what gear you're going to be in here basically. So this is going to shift your gears. If I had gears, it would be awesome to show you that stuff. And then that is going to go into. Let me see if I have a flashlight your rear differential. So no, if you ever deal, dealt with cars or trucks or anything with a rear differential, that's just right inside there. It looks like pretty much every other rear differential in existence because that's just how they they are made. And then that's gonna come out to your your CV joint or your, your drive shafts in the back. I hope that makes any, any kind of sense. Um, that's the gist of it. So what I gotta do is 
Um, I got to take this all apart. So I haven't taken this apart yet, uh, besides what was apart right from the get-go. Um, that rear motor, uh, sorry, pump and motor section is all taken off. So I gotta, I'm actually gonna drop this whole thing so you guys can see how to take apart the whole works. Um, and in order to do that, I'm gonna take off the bed, which is pretty straightforward. Everybody probably knows how to do that. Um, disconnect some stuff. I gotta get underneath the seat and disconnect um, like the air conditioning uh, uh, stuff and whatever there. I gotta take apart all this linkage, get all that out of there. And I'm gonna drop the transmission and engine both as an entire unit. We're gonna slide that whole thing out of this unit so you can see how that goes. Um, it, it's, it's a straightforward process, um, but it's, you know, it's, it takes time. It's just a time job. And then when I bought this stuff, I actually got this motor. Um, it seems to be stuck, so I, I'm gonna debate whether or not I'm gonna rebuild this. Um, I, might, I might tear it down and then just show you guys as I'm tearing it down. So you can see that uh, because that's always fun to take stuff apart and see how it works. And that's kind of why I did this. I just wanted to sh show you how this all worked. So I might do that too, uh, just for fun or rebuild it. One of the two, depending on what's wrong with it. It doesn't turn over. This machine had a fire in it. So this is all just melted. And I don't know what kind of damage is on the inside of this thing. So I don't know what really happened so I don't know if it's worth saving but we'll take it apart have some fun with that but I do I do hope that this rear hydro section is good for one um, and is what is wrong with this as far as I can tell that's what's wrong with it so uh, thanks for watching and uh, I'll uh, catch you on the next one so with all of this stuff really it's all practical um, when I was in high school one of my favorite quotes that my shop teacher, Tim, gave to us uh, right at the beginning. Uh, it, it was his most fav famous line, and it was, uh, everything is the same but different, right? So when you're dealing with all of this stuff, um, it's all the same but different. So, you know, Chevy, Chevy engines have their distributor in the back, and Fords have them in the front, and uh, differentials all basically look the same. You know, motors are all the same. It's all the same principles. It's just assembled in different ways. So it's one of my favorite sayings, and it's so true with just about everything. When, whenever you're walking through life, it's all the same but different, right? It's like the, the, the variables are the same. It's just how you put them all together is just a little bit different. So um, anyway, that's, that's my, that's my uh, zen moment for the day. So thanks for watching. Um, we're going to get on this. I'm going to keep doing videos. I appreciate you following along for the new vi uh, viewers just watching this one. Um, sorry if I'm rambling too much, but I appreciate you. Uh, thanks for watching.